What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the GMK Tech M7 Mini PC. Now a few weeks ago we actually took a look at their M7 Pro, which is an upgraded version of this. This one is coming in a bit cheaper over on their website, especially if you pick it up bare bones. But we've got the same basic design here, and personally I think it's a pretty good looking mini PC. It's got the same transparent top, and in here we've got that cooling fan for the RAM and the SSD. And another thing this shares with the Pro model is the fact that we've got Oculink up front, so it's really easy to add a fast eGPU to this thing. Inside of the box, along with the M7 Mini PC, we're going to get an HDMI cable. We also get a mounting bracket and hardware, plus our 120 watt power supply. This thing can actually do up to a 70 watt TDP, so that 120 watt PSU is going to come in real handy. As for I.O., up front here from the right to the left, we've got our 3.5mm audio jack, two full-size USB 3 ports, USB 4, and our Oculink port. On each side, there's not really anything important going on. We do have some ventilation, but moving around back, we've got two full-size USB 2.0 ports, full-size display port, full-size HDMI, dual Ethernet, USB-C, and our power input. With their Pro model, it's actually using the 6950H, and that's going to be the main difference here. Besides, if you don't pick it up bare bones, the Pro model does come with more RAM and storage. But we've got 8 cores, 16 threads, up to 4.7 GHz, a Radeon 680mi GPU. You can add up to 96 GB of DDR5. It uses dual channel SODIMM at 4800 MHz. We've got two M.2 SSD slots, Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and up front, USB 4 and Oculink for easy eGPU connection. Getting right into Windows here. So far, everything's been working great with this PC. There's a few things that I want to show you here before we get into testing. But as you can see, we've got that Ryzen 7 Pro 6850H with Radeon graphics. And this is the 680M. With the latest AMD driver, it just states that it's an AMD Radeon. But yeah, this is definitely the 680M. I cross-checked it just to make sure. From the BIOS, we already had three gigs dedicated to VRAM. And since we're working with the non-pro model, we've got 16 gigs. And this is actually running at 4,800, but you can install 56. So if you do pick up the bare bones unit, I would suggest going with faster RAM here. One of the main things that uh, GMK Tech claims over on their website is that this will do up to a 70 watt TDP. I've got core temp and CPU-Z. And for sure, they weren't lying about this. This thing will jump right up to 70 watts. Cooling system they have here is working out pretty well with this unit, but we definitely need to get into some more intensive testing, like gaming with this thing, just to see what it does. But so far, not too bad. Using something like this as an everyday PC for web browsing should work out really well for a lot of people out there. Uh, from their website, you can see we've got the Pro and the M7. $299 on the bare bones unit here, so you will have to add your own RAM and storage. But we've got a few modes. So the silent mode, 35 watt, balanced, 54, performance, 65, and then we've got that high performance mode at a 70 watt TDP. And remember, you can add up to 96 gigs of RAM with this unit. These AMD 6000 series APUs do really well with just web browsing, email checking, and even 4K video playback. So we're going to check out a 4K demo here. Let's do a Sony food one. Full screen. Make sure we're at 4K. Stats for nerds. And it looks like on that initial load in, we had six drop frames, but throughout, we shouldn't be dropping anymore. And this is kind of normal, even on a higher end chip with a high end GPU, sometimes going into YouTube with stats for nerds on, you'll get those drop frames. But throughout, 4K video playback on this chip is going to work out great, whether you want to stream it from your favorite website, YouTube, Hulu, or native 4K video playback from, let's say, a NAS or an internal hard drive. So yeah, for what we've got here, not a bad little rig, but we do need to get into some more testing. We will be running some games on the iGPU, and then we're going to connect an Oculink eGPU. But the first thing I did was run some benchmarks, so let's go ahead and take a look at those first. Geekbench 6, single core, 2092, multi, 10,020. I actually thought we'd see a higher single core here, but this only does boost up to 4.7, as opposed to the Pros model that boosts up to 5.1. I also ran 3D Mark Night Raid. We will be coming back to this with that external GPU, but on the iGPU, we got a total score of 25,542. 
Since we're working with the Radeon 680M, which is based on RDNA 2, it is falling behind something with the 780M based on RDNA 3. But we definitely need to see how this iGPU handles real world gaming, so let's get right into it. And the first one we have here is Fallout 4. We're at low settings, 1080p, and I think we could probably take this up to medium. I originally had this plugged into a 120Hz monitor, but with that we did get some dips and just kind of locking this down at 60 on this 680M does run constantly at 60fps. Next on the list, we've got Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, and I actually wanted to just check out some frame generation here with this. It's not bad, we're at medium settings, 1080p, FSR is set to balanced with FSR 3 frame generation enabled. Every once in a while we do get really close to going under that 60 mark, but for the most part we're seeing an average of around 72 FPS. And finally, I wanted to check out Cyberpunk 2077. Low settings, FSR is set to performance, and we're going to be hard pressed to run this at 60 at 1080. Dropping this down to 900p will allow us to go over that mark. And if you were to run 5600 megahertz RAM in this, you would get a higher frame rate here. I still don't think even set to low here at 1080, we'd get a real constant 60 out of it. But there are ways to add more GPU power to this PC. Remember, up front, we do have USB 4 and Oculink. And for this, I'm going to be using the new 1X GPU 2. This is an RX 7800M. It's just kind of an all-in-one dock for a USB 4 or Oculink. And with the M7, we will be connecting Oculink because it's a much faster connection. It's really simple to do. With the eGPU, depending on what you're using, there's a ton of them on the market right now. We're going to plug one end of the Oculink cable into the front of the mini PC, other end into whatever dock you're going to be using. And now that we've got the Oculink eGPU connected, it's really going to boost that gaming performance. First things first, 3 d Mark Night Raid once again, but instead of using the iGPU, we've got that 7800M. We were at around 25,000. We're now up to 55,456 total score here with Night Raid and real-world gaming performance does translate quite well. Starfield, 1080p, high settings with FSR set to around 80%. If you take a look up in the top left-hand corner, you can see that we do hit around 120 FPS, and I forgot to unlock the frame rate here. I've got V-Sync turned on, and I'm plugged into a 120 hertz display. Next up, one of my favorite arcade racers, we've got Forza Horizon 5, 1080 Ultra Settings, seeing an average of around 140 FPS with this, and at 1440, we can get an average of around 93. And if you remember, with Cyberpunk 2077 on that iGPU, we had to take everything down to low, FSR was at performance, and we were seeing averages of around 47 FPS. But now that we've got that RX 7800M connected over that Oculink port, we're up to Ultra 1080, and we're seeing an average of around 78 FPS. Overall, the GMK Tech M7 does make a great little mini desktop PC, but of course there are newer chips on the market. I mean, we're working with a 6000 series CPU here and RDNA 2 graphics on the iGPU. So in the end, it's really going to be up to you. You can definitely game on the integrated graphics here, but where this thing really shines is with an Oculink eGPU. Of course, you're going to be able to add a DGPU to this with the correct dock and get much better performance out of it. So if you're interested in learning a little more, I will leave links in the description to GMK Tech's website. And if there's anything else you want to see running on the M7 Pro, just let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.